Hello, today is December 25th, 2022, and in this video, I will discuss how I select my breeding pigeons. Uh, for starters, you know, there's a lot of misconceptions out there on selecting pigeons, and these methods have worked for me for many years, and I think uh, can really help you. So, when I go to select my breeding pigeons, I want you to know that champion breeders come in all shapes and sizes, all colors, I've seen them every possible way. Now, what is the most important for me is I like pigeons bred from long lines of champion birds. I like to see the grandparents, the great grandparents, uncles, nieces, great aunts, all superstars. The odds of continuing a line of pigeons and continuing to breed champions for generations, you should select pigeons that come from generations of champion birds. Now, I'm don't, I don't get too excited over like a one-hit wonder if a bird jumps up and has multiple top performances, but yet there's real no, no other serious records in the family. That doesn't excite me. To see pigeons that are winning and many pigeons winning within a family, that's pretty exciting and it's something I would definitely look at. The other thing that I like to see, how have others done with this family? There's, there's some great handlers out there in the sport. So I would suggest look at how other people are flying with the birds you're looking to bring in and use as your breeding stock. Uh, if they're winning for others, it's a good sign that they'll probably win for you. Another thing that I like to do is buy from the champion or as close to the champion as possible. You'll find that uh, the champion pigeon has the genetics, it has the lungs, it has the heart. You know what the champion has. It has the ability to be a champion. It's tough with an untested pigeon to know exactly what the genetics are, but with a champion, you know what its genetics are. So if possible, buy from the champion. If you can't buy from the champion and the entire family is winning, your odds of getting great pigeons from another bird in the family increases whether you buy from an uncle, an aunt, a cousin, a child. Uh, if there's a lot of winning birds within the family, the odds are increased. Now, I also like to look to breed from champion racers, if at all possible. Again, going back to the champion racers, you know their genetics. I rarely have found a real superstar racer, especially at long distance, not to be a superstar breeder. If a bird scores over and over in multiple races, more often than not, it's gonna be a really good breeding pigeon. Now, one mistake many fanciers make is they look to breed from inbred pigeons. They wanna bring in a bird that's a father, daughter, half brother, half sister, mother, son, first cousin mating. I think you limit your odds. Most of the superstar breeders in the sport are total crossed pigeons. So keep that in mind. The game changing pigeons of the sport, I could list pretty much endless list of game-changing pigeons. They're all total crosses. They're unrelated pigeons. The mother and father were unrelated. The baby went on to be a game-changing pigeon. So don't limit yourself to inbred pigeons. Me personally, and many of the Europeans, I like to see a lot of unrelated superstars in the pedigree. You may have a line, a line of birds, that, is, that are winning well, that, that fancy may have a certain line of pigeons, but you'll notice he's constantly, he or she is constantly crossing in other birds, other superstar pigeons within the family. So don't get caught up in inbred pigeons. Most of the great pigeons are always unrelated. Most of the superstar breeders of the sport are bred from two unrelated pigeons. The other thing is the good ones show themselves fairly quickly. So you bring in a bird, you try it, you breed the babies. Within a generation, you should know if you have something special. I've heard people say, well, I have to cross the birds two or three times before you know I get the true value. Well, if you cross them two or three times, you don't have the original stock. Right from the beginning, you should see results from the good pigeons. Now again, if you import a pigeon, you may not want to put too much emphasis on the first year. They usually have to acclimate. I don't have a lot of luck the very first year when a pigeon comes out of quarantine, but usually after that, it can be really, really good. 
So uh, good pigeons, again, they show themselves very fast. Now, taking that aside, we're looking at long line of champions, maybe cross pigeons, a lot of superstars in the family. The number one thing I see in every superstar bird I've ever handled across Europe, America, my best pigeons, they all have super feather quality. Soft, supple, silky feather. Uh, when people visit me, they ask, well, what do you give your birds to get, to get such uh, super feather quality? And I tell them feather quality is born. It's in the genetics. It's not made. You can't give them a bath. You can't give them oil seeds. Feather quality is born. So the best have great feather quality. I start there. Bird has to have super feather quality. The next thing, the bird has to have super buoyancy. You want them to feel full, but light and corky. Uh, the great pigeons never feel heavy. They always feel very, very buoyant. They feel almost in racing condition year round. So if you don't like to train pigeons like, like me and you wanna do well in say one loft races, select pigeons that don't get heavy. You want very corky, buoyant birds. When I started in pigeons, uh, back in the 70s, I came across this old Fabry pigeon, this 554 Fabry pigeon, and he was just a super corky, super feathered pigeon. His children were just, just they handled like cork. They never put an ounce of weight on. They handled the same in the winter as they did during the racing season. And my results just soared. What a difference having pigeons that like live in racing condition. And you can select for that. And again, it puts the odds in your favor. The next thing I like is flexible. Um, great pigeons are flexible. They're not hard. They're not like carved out of stone. They don't have big, solid, thick backs. The great ones are flexible. So when you hold a bird, I like, they, in Europe they call them the ringers. I like a pigeon that moves around. And when a pigeon's in flight for many hours, its tail is doing this. It's like its whole body is shifting, it's moving. And if a bird is real stiff, it, it's gonna tire out. The great ones are flexible. And when they're flying, this is what their body's doing. As they hit wing currents, you'll see the, the wings, the tail. This is how they stay on course and they're very flexible. So don't get caught up in that heavy, heavy backs or you know, crazy one pin tail. I always hear fancy say one pin tail. That's a show quality. I like my bird's tails to taper from the back and maybe be the two feather width at the base, at the bottom, at the end of the tail. Again, the one pin tail is, is really a show, a show pen thing, just like heavy backs are. These pigeons are flying, they're not carrying things. Um, you want to have enough bone, you want to have strength, you want to have flexibility but you don't want to have extra. You don't need extra bone. You don't need extra weight on a pigeon. It is flying. And uh, much of the, um, the selection that was done, especially years ago, it was more like show pen selection. The birds were heavy bone, heavy, heavy bodied, full, thick, and uh, again, not the greatest for racing. The next thing you must select for are horses for courses. If you want to race long distance, you have to select from superstar long distance pigeons. You want to race short distance, same thing. Look for superstar short distance pigeons. To find all around pigeons that can fly 100 to 600 miles would be extremely rare. Uh, I think you're limiting, limiting yourself. Try to select for what you need. You'll find um, sprint pigeons can be more muscular, bigger stronger, more like a bodybuilder than a long distance pigeon. Long distance pigeons are smaller bodied, longer wings. Um, I like to say big oars on a small boat. You don't wanna have a lot of extra on the pigeon. The long distance pigeons seem to have more wing and less body. The sprint pigeons, bulky or stronger. If you look at like the Olympians, the human Olympians, you have the 100 yard dash guys look like they're ready for a bodybuilding show and the marathoners a slight lean um, not too big and again they can run or if it's a pigeon they could fly all day now there's a bunch of uh, secondary theories when it comes to selection 
you'll hear the people look at the vein in the back of the throat, the, the feathers under the wing, the horns um, under the beak, uh, scales on the legs. There's a pile of them. For me, these are all secondary. If you start selecting pigeons by a theory, whether it's an eye theory or a square feathers under the wing, you, you're limiting yourself. You know, select from long lines of champions. Select super feathered, buoyant pigeons. That's the secret to selecting pigeons. Don't get caught up in these little theories. Now again, all things being equal, I will look at finer details down the line. If all things are being equal, I can't select a pigeon. And I'm gonna do a video on just that in itself. Those little things that I may look at. Another, uh, thing that you shouldn't get too caught up on is eye sign. Again, I like rich colored eyes. I don't like washed out type eyes. I like a lot of color in the eyes, all things being equal. I'll pick the stronger eye. Um, but I've seen cases where, like when I first saw the Invincible Montavon of Maurice Cassart, I was so disappointed when I looked into its eye. It was an orange eye with a pupil. And the bird went on to be a prolific breeder. Any of the eye sign people would have looked at that eye and said, oh, this is you know not worth breeding from. And the same with my original bird, the original 554 Fabry, a red eye with a pupil, nothing much to look at. The eye sign guys at the time, now we're going back 50 years, didn't like the pigeon. I'm still winning with, with his children, well, not his children, but descendants of the pigeon uh, 50 years later. So again, what I like in eyes, I like rich colors. I like opposite eye colors mated together, pearls to yellows, pearls to reds, or yellow to yellow, yellow to red, like that. I don't like to breed a lot of pearl eye to pearl eye. If you're careful, the eyes get weaker. It's a recessive eye, the pearl eye. You'll lose color. It's better off to uh, mate opposite eye colors together. The other thing that I look for in eyes, I like to bring the bird out into the sun and I like to see the pupil dilate, get very tiny. If a bird's gonna be flying in the sun for many hours, it's best if the, you know, the pupil can constrict down to a small type pupil. And as some birds, you bring them into the sun and the pupil is huge. And that's not something I wanna consider. When I was a kid, uh, Pete DeWeird was the, famous pigeon selector, and he would select for some of the, the local fanciers here, and he would select all over the world. And everybody was amazed at how well Pete's birds would do when he selected these pigeons. And they'd get them from Pete, and they went on to be champions. And they all thought, wow, this guy, he really knows something. Well, you know what his secret was? Pete would go to the best lofts and buy from the best pigeons. It was that simple. Pete wasn't going to the Lear market with $5 birds and trying to select the superstars. He was going to the best lofts and buying the nicest specimens from the best pigeons. That simple. There was no great, great selection thing for him. I mean, he wasn't like pulling on beaks or feeling something or looking into the bird's soul and selecting a bird. Buy from the best lofts, buy from the best pigeons. Your odds go right up. And uh, if someone could go and look at $5 pigeons to select champion breeder, champion breeders from a group of just nothing birds, they would be, you know, a millionaire overnight. Nobody can really do it. You know, increase your odds. Select from the best, buy from the best. Again, this is uh, Frank McLaughlin of McLaughlin Lofts. If you like my videos, please subscribe and share, tell your friends, and um, I'll keep them coming. Thank you.